Hello guys, welcome back. Happy Wednesday, April 1st. Before we get started, I'd like to make a big welcome to my new period two students joining us from Mr. Cohn's class. Uh, really excited to have you guys on board. So since some of you are new to my class here, I want to go over a couple of basics. You're looking at the OneNote worksheet right now. Uh, as we go through the lesson, obviously we're going to talk about things like the aim, the do now, readings, and definitions. But on the OneNote worksheet, you will notice in the margin I also inserted video one and two. Those are hyperlinks to YouTube videos that go with today's lesson. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a visual of what that looks like. When I say pause the video, you pause my video on YouTube. You go to OneNote and you watch those videos on your own. And uh, the same thing goes for when you're doing readings and answering questions. All right, so let's get started. As I said, it's April 1st, which means April Fool's Day. We're going to begin with a joke. What monster plays the best jokes on April Fool's Day? Anyone? Any guesses? Of course, that would be Frankenstein. Get it? Get it? See what I did there? All right. So that's me, Mr. Gates. Once again, welcome to our period two class. And we're ready to get started. So you're on the OneNote worksheet right now. I'm going to go over the aim with you guys. Today, we are beginning the Louisiana Purchase which is probably the most important and most interesting part of Thomas Jefferson's presidency. Let's begin with the aim. How did the Louisiana Purchase benefit the United States? So today's lesson is about a land purchase, and it's really the first major acquisition of territory that begins westward expansion for the United States. This happened in 1803 during Jefferson's presidency. We'll get back to that in a minute. Let's begin with the do now. I want you to pause my video and get started on your worksheet and complete the do now questions. They are fill-ins. Do your best to fill in the blanks. Those of you in period two may not have gone over this in the last couple of days. My other classes went over this at the beginning of the week. Welcome back. Number one on the do now. The Marbury v. Madison Supreme Court case established the blank power of judicial review. Of course, judicial review, as we went over in the Marbury v. Madison case, is like the superpower for the Supreme Court. This was an important Supreme Court case because it established the precedent of judicial review, the first time the Supreme Court declared a law unconstitutional. Number two, who sued James Madison for failing to deliver the paperwork that would have finalized his appointment? Of course, it's William Marbury. William Marbury never got his job. Remember, he was one of the midnight justices appointed by President Adams on his way out the door. And when Pre President Jefferson took over, he told his Secretary of State, James Madison... Do not file that paperwork. We are not hiring those Federalist judges. Adams, that sneaky devil, he's trying to sneak those Federalist judges in last minute before his presidency ends. And then, of course, number three, blank. The I'm sorry, the Supreme Court can declare a law blank if they feel it violates the Constitution. That, of course unconstitutional. The Supreme Court can declare a law unconstitutional if they feel it violates the Constitution. So, of course, that's a little bit of review on the Marbury v. Madison Supreme Court case. Let's take a look at today's lesson on OneNote. And we are going to begin right here with video number one. So I want you to pause my video, go to the OneNote worksheet, and open up video number one. Watch it, and then we will get started. Go ahead. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed video one. It's a nice little, in a nutshell, review of the Louisiana Purchase. Let's get started with the reading 
on OneNote. So we're going to go here first. We're going to do the reading on the front of the OneNote page one and answer question one and two. Today I'm going to do the reading with you. The Louisiana Purchase. By the early 1800s, many American settlers had moved west of the Appalachian Mountains. As the population in the territories in the frontier grew, new states were admitted to the Union. Settlers in these new states relied on the Mississippi River to ship their goods. The port city of New Orleans, located at the mouth of the Mississippi River, played a key role in shipping goods to Europe. In 1802, France acquired the Louisiana Territory from Spain. There were rumors that the French would not allow American farmers to use the port of New Orleans to ship their goods. Angry farmers were worried this would hurt their economy. President Jefferson sent an ambassador to France to try to buy the port city of New Orleans. Pause my video, answer question one and two based on the reading. Welcome back, guys. So as you can see on my screen, I highlighted in yellow some of the text in the reading that'll help you answer number one. Why was the Mississippi River important to American farmers on the frontier? It says in the reading that farmers relied on the Mississippi River, I'm gonna abbreviate Mississippi, to ship goods. This is something that we have been talking about all year long. A lot of these early Americans, whether it be colonial days or now we're into the early 1800s, they still rely on rivers to ship goods. They didn't have trains. They didn't have airplanes. They did not have trucks. They did not have cars. Rivers were the primary source of not only transportation, but also shipping. It also says in the reading that the port, of New Orleans played a key role in shipping. So to talk about New Orleans, we're gonna go to the map which is on your worksheet. I believe it's on page two. Take a look at this map. This is the Mississippi River. You can see that black border of the Louisiana Territory snaking its way all the way from the city of New Orleans. I will use a big red dot for the city of New Orleans. New Orleans is at the southern mouth of the Mississippi River. And so farmers, I'm going to make F's on a bunch of states throughout the Midwest. If I was a farmer in the Midwest, I would bring my goods to the Mississippi River. And once my goods are at the Mississippi River, it's easy to ship those goods south where the port of New Orleans would be the main trading center for getting these goods out to the Atlantic and either shipping them to Europe or possibly to the northeastern United States. So as you can see in our reading, the farmers not only rely on the Mississippi River, but they also rely on the port of New Orleans for shipping. Question number two, why were American farmers unhappy when France acquired the Louisiana Territory from Spain? That was a typo, sorry for that. All right, so why were the farmers unhappy when France uh, acquired the territory from Spain? Most importantly, there were rumors that France would not allow Americans to use New Orleans, I abbreviated that, to ship goods. And those rumors were due to the fact that we had had a lot of problems with France during John Adams' presidency and throughout the beginning of Jefferson's presidency. So when France first acquired the territory from Spain, we were very unhappy that, you know, we may not be able to use the Mississippi River to trade goods. The river is one thing. I'm going to highlight the river again. So here's the Mississippi River. 
But using that river is useless if you have no control of the port city. A port city, P-O-R-T, is the city where trade takes place. New York City is a port city. Boston is a port city. Richmond, Virginia is a port city. Charleston, South Carolina is a port city. So you can see all these X's that I drew on the Atlantic coast. New Orleans is an underrated port city. People think New Orleans, they think Mardi Gras, they think parades, they think celebrations. New Orleans is actually one of the most important ports in the United States because the Mississippi River snakes its way through the entire Midwest. So in between the Rocky Mountains, which are a huge mountain range in the west, and the smaller Appalachian Mountains in the east, all of these smaller rivers flow towards the Mississippi Valley. And that makes it very easy for farmers to ship their goods along those smaller rivers to the largest river in North America, the Mississippi River. So what is Thomas Jefferson going to do? If the French now control the port city of New Orleans, he's going to contact the French government and make an offer for the port city of New Orleans. What he winds up getting is the entire Louisiana Purchase. We'll come back to that in a moment. All right, so we finished up question one and two. Next up on the OneNote worksheet, we are going here. So we're going to go over the definitions and key terms. I'll zoom in a bit. All right, so in a moment on my screen, you're going to see the definition of Louisiana Purchase pop up. And you're also going to see bullets highlighting benefits of the Louisiana Purchase. So for period two students, I'm just trying to show you where the notes are going to go on today's worksheet. All right, so the first definition on the worksheet there is the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase was a land acquisition. The United States acquires this land from France. We bought it. Thomas Jefferson, President of the United States at this time, 1803, he offers to buy the port city of New Orleans, and the French leader, Napoleon Bonaparte, made a counteroffer, and he told Jefferson he would sell him the entire Louisiana territory for just $15 million. Thomas Jefferson knew this was a great deal. Uh, when we go back to the map in a little bit, we're going to talk about how much land this is. So I want you to copy this on the worksheet. Uh, everything that I've highlighted, underlined, or added notes to what it says on the screen should go on your worksheet. The Louisiana Purchase, President Jefferson purchased the Louisiana Territory from France for $15 million in 1803. This is a picture of Thomas Jefferson on the right, and that is Napoleon Bonaparte on the left. Now, the question I always get about Napoleon, Mr. Gates, was he as short as they say he was? Yes, he was a very short man, and uh, that's one of those little trivial things throughout history that someone becomes famous for. People still today talk about a Napoleon complex, I guess if, uh, if someone is angry about being short, they would often uh, refer to the Napoleon complex. Napoleon was a pretty ruthless leader and is pretty famous for trying to take over all of Europe. And so uh, I guess his stature was uh, believed to be a reason that he had some of his own uh, issues or insecurities. Now, on to the benefits. If you take a look on my worksheet... The next slide will be the bullets that go with it. So the first benefit of the Louisiana Purchase. When the United States buys this territory, it doubles the size of the United States. I'm going to go to the map when I'm done explaining this, and we'll talk about that again. Second benefit of the Louisiana Purchase. The United States gains control of the Mississippi River for trade. Third benefit of the Louisiana Purchase. The United States gains control of the port city of New Orleans. So when we talked about trade in that first reading, we talked about how farmers wanted to use the river and they wanted to use the port 
of New Orleans. And then finally, a benefit that we weren't even sure about when we first purchased the territory, all of that land that we acquired that doubled the size of the United States, much of that land was fertile land. And I know the period two students who had Mr. Cohn had started learning about westward expansion. The Louisiana Purchase begins westward expansion. And one of the reasons that so many Americans are excited to move out onto that territory, it's because of the fertile land that that territory had. The fertile land would be good for farming. The fertile land would be good for growing crops. And eventually the fertile land along the Western Territory would help new states be admitted into the United States. Now let's take a look at the map again. What I'm gonna do on the map is clean it up a little bit with my eraser. Figure out how to get my eraser going. Hold on, bear with me for a second. Here we go. All right, so let's take a look at the Louisiana Purchase. On this map, the original 13 United States are included in this orange color. And by 1803, there were new states that had been added to the Union. Ohio was the 14th state. And then new states like Tennessee and Kentucky will be added soon. These territories were already U.S. territories, Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, Mississippi, but those territories were not yet states. So the border of the United States in 1803 was all of that pink territory. We would acquire Spain soon after. Once we purchased the Louisiana territory, we've doubled the size of the United States. Now I'm going to use yellow to outline the Louisiana Purchase territory. And you can see on my map just how big this territory is. It's all of the territory between the Rocky Mountains and the Mississippi River. And one of the most amazing things about this purchase, look at the size of this land. We got all of that land for only, we use green, for only $15 million. That's basically 15 states for $15 million. For a comparison, we also purchased Florida from Spain for the same price. Florida was $15 million, and the Louisiana Purchase was $15 million. So you can see just how great a real estate deal this was. It's a tremendous bargain. And when Napoleon offers this sale to Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson knew he had to take the deal. The problem is Jefferson is unsure if he's allowed to buy land. And that's where we're going next. So what I want you guys to do on your OneNote worksheet is to scroll down to video two. You'll see it says the historical audacity of the Louisiana Purchase, the biggest big government play ever. I want you to hit the play button on that video, which will start to introduce us to Jefferson's debate his dilemma, does he as president have the power to purchase land? Welcome back, guys. I'm just trying to catch up and get to our next reading. So here's our next reading. I love that video, the biggest big government play ever. It talked about how Jefferson had a dilemma. He knows the purchase is right for the United States. He's just not sure if the Constitution allows a president to buy land. So let's do the second reading. I'm going to have you guys read this one quietly to yourself. Once again, I basically highlighted the answers in the text. So pause my video, finish the reading titled Jefferson's Decision, and answer question one and two. We are back. Number one is not exactly answered in the text. Why do you think the French wanted to sell the Louisiana Territory? The first and most obvious answer, I'm trying to get my pen to work, bear with me. The first and most obvious answer, they needed the money. But why? 
If you were paying attention in the video, I mentioned why Napoleon might need money. Anyone? Anyone? I wish I could see you raising your hands. They needed money because Napoleon was trying to take over Europe. Napoleon winds up growing into a power-hungry dictator, and he was involved in many wars in Europe, and he was kind of like a mini Adolf Hitler where this power-hungry dictator tries to take over the entire continent. Uh, maybe not to the extent where Adolf Hitler started World War II, but Napoleon was involved with European rivals all throughout his tenure as leader in France, whether it be Spain or England, and those wars were expensive. The other reason the French wanted to sell the Louisiana Territory, France had lost much of its land in America. Earlier this year, we learned about the French and Indian War, which was really like the beginning of the end for French control of North America. The British, think 13 colonies, British colonies, the British had a greater control on North America. In this lesson, in this event, France made a last ditch effort to get back into control of territory in the North American continent, and they decided it wasn't worth it. Napoleon wants to focus his attention on his wars in Europe, so he offers to sell the territory to the United States. Number two, literally the million dollar question, why was Jefferson unsure if he should purchase the territory? That answer was in the text. So you see all the green text that I highlighted? Jefferson is unsure if he should purchase the territory. I lost some of my writing. I apologize for that. Jefferson is unsure if the Constitution allows a president to buy land. And so this is the conflict for Jefferson. He is an anti-federalist. He doesn't want a big government. He doesn't want an extra strong federal government. But here he goes against his own beliefs about the Constitution and his political party's power expanding the government by by going with a looser interpretation of the written rules in the Constitution, Jefferson goes against his own word, and he is criticized for this by Federalists and political rivals, but he knows it is what is best for the country. It's a smart move. The Louisiana Purchase literally changes the United States. Overnight, the size of the United States has doubled. It's going to begin the westward expansion and so if you think about the Louisiana Purchase, it literally leads to new states. It literally leads to, I believe, 15 new states being added to the country. And it really kicks off an era of westward expansion. The 1800s, the Louisiana Purchase was acquired in 1803. The 1800s become a century of westward expansion. So the new territories, I forget the exact year for the Mexican session, the new territories like Texas, then Oregon, then California, and all of the Mexican session, it's all added after the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. Jefferson's decision to buy the territory is a huge impact on the United States history because it leads to decades of westward expansion. Now, guys and girls, you're on OneNote. I want you to go back to the page two. Take a look on the bottom. You've got my beautiful map without all my beautiful drawing. I want you to answer the aim as your summary question. Pause my video. Take a look. Answer the aim. How did the Louisiana Purchase benefit the United States? I'll pause my video while you take a look at that. Welcome back. Let's go over the summary. 
And to go over the summary, we're going to take a look at your summary answer, which should be pretty much the same as the benefit notes that you took here. So let's take a look on my slideshow. All right, how did the Louisiana Purchase benefit the United States? For starters, the Louisiana Purchase Territory doubles the size of the United States. The Louisiana Purchase helps U.S. farmers gain control of the Mississippi River. The United States gains control of the port city of New Orleans. The United States gains tons, millions of acres of fertile land for farmers, and it opens up new territories for westward expansion. All right, folks, that's it. That's all we got for you today. A uh, really interesting lesson on the Louisiana Purchase. Tomorrow we have a map activity to look forward to. You guys will basically recreate my beautiful drawing and coloring here on the map. One last quick reminder, all classes, this includes the new period two class and all of my uh, original five seventh grade classes, you have a homework assignment that is due. This was worksheet 12A. Let me jump into period threes folder to show you what that looks like. This was 12A, which I assigned on Monday. I gave you the extra day today to complete it. 12B is today's lesson. I am grading, I am grading the Louisiana Purchase textbook section. All right, so get that done. Any questions, as always, email me. Hope everybody has a wonderful April Fool's Day. Hope everybody's staying safe and feeling well. We'll talk to you tomorrow.